We ready, guys? Everybody? Anybody hear me? Okay. Excellent. Uh, we got a whole seven, six, five. I got to wait. Got to do it legal. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the planning and zoning meeting for the city of Smyrna. Today is Monday, November 13, 2017. It's 6 p.m. This meeting's called to order. At this time, we'd like to ask that all electronic devices be turned off as they interfere with our recording equipment. For those of you joining us for the first time, this meeting is conducted much like a council meeting. As such, each application will include a presentation um, from city staff followed by a question and answer session between staff and the board. Following staff's presentation, we'll have the applicant present their case and answer any questions. Once all the questions have been satisfied, we'll have an opportunity for anyone in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to the application. We ask that you come forward one at a time, state your name and address for the record, and sign the sign-in sheet at the podium. And also, please direct all your questions and comments to the board. All right, we have several items on our agenda that need to be tabled, so if you guys will just bear with us for a couple minutes, we'll move through these as quickly as possible. Uh, the first item on the agenda is 2017-314. This is zoning request Z17014. This is to be tabled to the December 11, 2017 Planning and Zoning Board meeting uh, to allow for the completion of the DRI uh, review process by the ARC and GRTA. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to table this item, please? Second, Ms. Harrington. Please vote. I got, there we go. All right, the motion has passed unanimously. All right, the next item on our agenda um, is 2017-316. This is zoning request Z17015. This item is to be tabled to the December 11th, 2017 Planning and Zoning Board meeting. Um, can I get a motion to table this item? Get a motion, Ms. Warren. Um, second, uh, Mr. Bartlett, uh, please vote to table this item to the December Planning and Zoning meeting. Mr. Rice, thank you. All right, moving right along. The, it passes, it's tabled 6-0. All right, so the next item on our agenda is 2017-357. This is zoning request Z17021. This is to be tabled to the December 11th, 2017 planning and zoning meeting at the request of the applicant. A motion to table this item, please. Uh, Mr. Bartlett, second, Ms. Harrington, and please vote. Um, <laughs> this, um, this passes as well. I've got, I'm still missing somebody here, am I not? Me. Okay, the pass is 6-0. Right, Mr. Rice, thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is 2017-359. This is zoning request Z17020. This item is to be withdrawn at the request of the applicant. And a motion to withdraw this item from the agenda, please. A motion, Mr. Monroe, second. Ms. Harrington, please vote to remove this item. That item is removed 6-0. Okay. We have two more items to table. So we got 2017-434. This is zoning request Z17023. This is to be tabled to the December 11th, 2017 Planning and Zoning Board meeting at the request of the applicant. I need a motion to table. We have a motion from Ms. Harrington. Second, Mr. Monroe. Please vote to table this item to the December 11th meeting. And a 
it's tabled 6-0. Okay. The next item on the agenda is 2017-435. This is uh, zoning request Z17-022. This is to be tabled indefinitely at the request of the applicant. I need a motion to table this item indefinitely. Mr. Rice and second Mr. Monroe. And please vote to table this item indefinitely. And it is tabled 6-0. All right, for the fun. This is item 2017-362, uh, zoning request Z17-019. And use permit for the installation of a cell tower. It's 2.8 acres, landlot 634, sorry. This is also 1700 Roswell Road. The applicant is Verizon Wireless. Mr. Martin, the background, please. Uh, good evening. Uh, this request for a special land use permit at 1700 uh, Roswell Street is, uh, you guys have tabled it several times up to this point. Um, they're finally ready to move forward uh, with the request. So with that said, you guys will hear it tonight. There'll be a public hearing and you'll make a recommendation. Uh, mayor and council will hear it on December 18th and they will make a final um, decision on that, on that uh, request at that time. As I stated before, the subject property is the, the public storage facility at 1700 Roswell Street. It's approximately 2.8 acres in size. Uh, the applicant is requesting to install a 130-foot uh, monopole, telecommunications monopole, um, with a 10-foot with a um, lightning rod. Uh, the subject property has a zoning classification of OD, office distribution. With this request, that zoning classification will not change. It will remain the same. Um, this, this request is merely for the, the construction of that, of that monopole. The future land use map for the area reflects the, the subject property as neighborhood activity center. Um, as you can see from, from the map, to the north, south, and west is all neighborhood activity. And then the adjoining property to the east is medium density residential. As I stated earlier, um, the request is to build a new um, 130 foot tall uh, tele telecommunications monopole. Um, this will help with Verizon's uh, service delivery for the area as well as um, relieve some capacity issues for other cell towers in the, in the, in the immediate area. Um, I'll let them speak to that and let their, their engineer uh, tell you exactly how all that works out. Um, this pole will be built on the backside of what they call Building B within the public storage facility. Um, it'll be approximately 29 uh, feet from Hawthorne Avenue um, and may require uh, two variances, which I'll, I'll show you on the next slide. Here's the, the subject property. This is the proposed location of the cell tower. Um, with this cell tower location, there are two variances. Uh, one for the reduction of the setback from 30 feet to 29 feet, so it's a one foot um, variance. And then a reduction of the setback from offsite buildings uh, from 130 feet to 100 feet. Um, basically, the, the city zoning ordinance requires the height, of the, the, the structure has to be set back from offsite, offsite buildings equivalent to the height of the structure. So that's where the 130 feet comes in. And basically that that building that's within 100 feet is the warehouse facility that's across uh, Hawthorne Avenue. Uh, staff has reviewed uh, both these variance requests and we're, we're supportive of them. Here are some street views of the proposed cell tower. Um, the first is from across Hawthorne on the other side of the cell tower. 
Uh, the second site is from the west end of Hawthorne where uh, it intersects with Matthews and Roswell Street, looking back at the site. I know it's a little tough to see. The third uh, picture is from Roswell Street on the other side of uh, the, public the public storage facility. Uh, the fourth is from the east side of Hawthorne Street. So looking back down Hawthorne towards the, the facility. And the last one is if you were standing in the middle of Hawthorne Street, right at the at the cell tower location, looking looking at it, that's what you'd see. Here's some pictures of the subject property to give you some context of what it looks like today. And then some pictures of the adjoining properties. Um, immediately adjacent to the, the subject property. Uh, community development recommends approval of the special land use permit for the monopole uh, with the following conditions. Um, number one, the, the monopole be uh, constructed in substantial conformity to the site plan submitted. Uh, number two, all wiring and infra infrastructure access shall be from Roswell Street and per the the public works director. And number three, uh, the applicant shall provide street trees and landscaping along Hawthorne Avenue for the length of the property. Uh, with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Martin? Thank you, sir. All right, at this time, we'd like to ask the applicant to come forward and tell us a little bit about the plan. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Once you start it, if you just hit that arrow and move your. Oh, perfect. Wait, how do I? Sorry, I'll get it to the full size. There we go. Good. You might. Oh, never mind. Yeah, that works. Better. Perfect. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jenna Lee, and I'm here on behalf of Verizon Wireless. And with me is Wendy Doyle, who is the site acquisition specialist for this site. And we'll give you a quick overview. Um, Mr. Martin did a very thorough overview of the site and what we're actually requesting tonight. So I'll keep this presentation as brief as possible and focus on the need for the site and a little bit about the history of the site. You, as uh, Mr. Martin mentioned, we've tabled this a couple of times and we've been working with the community um, to evaluate al alternative sites. And what this presentation does is shows a couple of those sites and establishes from a radio frequency perspective why this is the, the most suitable location for the proposed tower in order to meet Verizon's service needs. So. Our first slide, this is just an overview slide that shows the, the staggering um, numbers that demonstrate how much we rely on telecommunications. And as all of you know, I'm sure we, you know, we are increasingly relying on our cell phones for more and more, not only day-to-day -day phone calls, but also email and data and downloads and that sort of thing. And this, um, this site is, speaks directly, I think, to that increasing demand that we as users are placing on, on the network. And, you know, often when we, when Verizon identifies a site for a new tower, it falls in one of two categories. Either it's a strictly coverage site, meaning that there's little or no existing telecommunications coverage in the area, so you plant a new tower and coverage is improved, or it's a capacity site. And Mr. Martin alluded to this. That means within Verizon's existing network, user demand is outpacing the existing services or capacities of the existing towers within the network. And this site does a little bit of both. So within this area, the geography that Verizon has identified, I'll skip this slide, which is just um, essentially says the same thing that Mr. Martin said. Within this geography, this is this slide shows the search area or the target area that Verizon is hoping to improve service for. And so within this area, it's between the residential areas between Windy Hill Road and Spring Road, you have a lot of um, capacity issues and coverage issues, particularly for in-building and in-car service. And so this tower is going to help 
address both of those, the coverage and the capacity, as I'll show you as we move on. Again, here's another slide that you already saw that shows the proposed site on the public storage property. This next slide, this one shows the existing towers that are nearby. So you'll see to the west, the closest existing tower is a tower owned by ATC, and it's 0.8 miles away. And as I move forward through the slides, you'll see that we've, the radio frequency engineers specifically evaluated that tower very carefully to see if co-location would be feasible on that tower. Um, you'll also see, I'll mention as we go further through the slides, to the east is Verizon's existing promenade tower, and that is the tower that's currently working at capacity and um, needs to be offloaded by this proposed tower. So again, this slide just simply shows the existing ATC tower that's located west of the proposed site, and as I'll show, this tower is um, too far away from the proposed coverage area, this targeted residential area, and um, also too close to Verizon's existing towers to really um, to meet demand. It would cause some coverage overlap and would also, it's too far west to meet the capacity, capacity needs of the promenade site. So moving on, these are the radio frequency maps that we submitted with our application. And they're pretty straightforward, but I'll walk you through them one by one. So in this slide, this shows the existing coverage in this area without the proposed tower. And you'll see on the map, the areas in red show those areas that have the best coverage currently, meaning that you have in-building in coverage. And in yellow, it means you have in-car coverage, but not necessarily in-building. Green means that if you're outside, you probably have decent coverage or tolerable coverage, and then blue means poor coverage. And so you'll see in this search area, there's a lot of green and blue, which is not great. So moving on, this sl slide shows the proposed tower. If the tower were to be 110 feet, and you'll see that in-building coverage is improved within this area, as well as in-car coverage. And the next slide shows at the proposed RAD Center, which means the, the height at which the antennas will be placed of 130 feet. And so you see that with this one, we actually get improved in-building coverage along those corridors that Verizon is targeting. The Hawthorne, Roswell Street, right in, throughout the, the center of the search area. Okay, this slide, the next one shows the capacity offload that we need. So as I mentioned, the Verizon's promenade site to the east, you'll see the, the large area in red demonstrates the, the area in which the promenade site is currently pr providing the best server. And this promenade sector is currently at capacity and stretching to serve user demand in this area. This next slide shows how the, the proposed tower significantly offloads that demand within the search area. You'll, you'll see in the, the purple and off-white color with the proposed tower, those antennas would now be the primary server, thus like uh, the, allowing the network to um, increase capacity and serve more users throughout this area. So the, the promenade tower will benefit, and all of the other surrounding towers in the network will also benefit by this new point of service. Okay, I mentioned that we, Verizon's engineers carefully evaluated the ATC tower that's located outside of the search area, but with, it's about, I think, 0.8 miles from the proposed site. So these, this next few slides will show if Verizon were to add antennas onto this tower rather than construct a new tower, what that would look like. And essentially, you'll see in all of these slides that co-locating on this tower shifts coverage west and away from our target search area. So you'll see there the search, the, the red is the in-building coverage. 
that it shifts too far west to really help address the service needs in this area. Again, this shows with the capacity issues that co-locating on that tower doesn't do very much to help alleviate the, the capacity of the promenade site, which is shown in red. One more, this is again, if Verizon were to co-locate on that tower, but at a higher place on the tower, same thing, you'll see the red, it shifts our improvements so far west that those targeted corridors in our search area aren't gonna get very much in building and in car improvements, which is what we're really targeting for this site. And again, this is the same thing showing at 170 feet that co-locating on that ATC tower does not provide the capacity improvements to the promenade site. And that's it. We really appreciate your time and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. I'd like to open the floor for questions for the applicant. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing. At this time, we'd like to ask if there's anybody in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to this application. Please state your name and address for the record and sign the sign-in sheet at the podium. And please direct all your comments to the board. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Let me fill this out. Yeah, you just put your name and address. You don't have to fill all the... It's a long need... address because I'm on Davenport Street, which is right around the corner. Perfect. But we don't need your social or kids' birthdays or any of that, just the pertinent data. All right. My name is Stephen Berman. I live at 2630 Davenport Street, SE. I've been a resident in Smyrna since 2008. Um, I moved here um, during the recession. In 2010, another group of people attempted to build a cell phone tower in our neighborhood, in my neighborhood. Do any of you live in Davenport, Rose Garden area? I didn't think so. This is my home. Have any of you looked at studies about cell towers, what it does to a community? It causes property values to fall. People are afraid to move in near a cell tower. Over 90% of people say that they will not consider a house unless it's very undervalued in an area near a cell tower. This is my home, this is my community. I like the fact that you said that you spoke to people in the community. I am vice president of the Rose Garden Davenport Town Neighborhood Association and nobody has approached us and we're the ones who live right there. So I really would like to know what community you're speaking to because it's not the immediate community that you're talking about. The other issue in 2010 when you all overwhelmingly voted against it and they finally decided to withdraw is the fact that they can rent other cell towers, but they wanted to build their own. If you've been around the Five Points area recently and you've seen all the building that's going on, a cell tower will devalue all of that area. We pay taxes. Lower property values cause lower taxes. We elect you. I don't know if anyone, has any of you all seen the movie Erin Brockovich? Remember when she has that glass of water and she asked the person to drink it? Think about this with a cell tower and how you are going to vote especially since they haven't really come, as far as I'm concerned, to the community that actually lives there. Not saying that she hasn't reached out or Verizon hasn't reached out to other people or other communities, but not mine. I'm vice president of the Neighborhood Association. We know nothing about this. I'd like you to take a drink of that water. I'd like for you to have a cell phone tower in Mr. your Berman, neighborhood. Mr. Berman, please direct your comments to us. Okay, I, I apologize. Hey, that's all right. 
Okay, this, I'm a little bit nervous. It, it's it's all right. It's no, we're not gonna we're not gonna bite, and we appreciate your opinion, but so, we've got to we've got to keep it a little bit calm in here. Okay, that's cool. So anyway, I just really would like you to consider all these facts that I've brought up, um, and I have nothing wrong with them moving into the neighborhood. 0.8 miles is not that very far to get some cell phone coverage. My cell phone works great in my house. You know? So we do have choices of other companies, and I'm sorry if it's not Verizon, but you know, you have other places to go. So anyway, I appreciate you all listening to me. And thank, thank you, you very Martin. much. You have a good evening. All right. Is there anyone else in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to this application? Okay. Any further discussion? All right. In the absence of any further discussion, I'd like to ask for a motion. I'll make a motion. And I um, just wanted to make a, a comment. This is my ward, so I'm going to make a motion. I, I do hear what you're saying as a resident. Um, and I appreciate your comments, and I think that if this was my neighborhood that I live directly in, I would have some concern, but would still probably push it through. Um, I think that, I, well, I know for a fact, every time I drive down Windy Ridge, my phone drops right outside of the Rogues Garden. I mean, it's, it's almost like clockwork, how bad the coverage is and that kind of dip in the road. And I would hope that if we do get some better coverage that more businesses will move into that area and your property values will increase from there. So with that, um, I'd like to make a motion to approve zoning request 71Z-019 for a special land use permit for the installation of the cell phone tower. We got a motion to approve Ms. Hine Warren. Do we have a second? All in favor, please vote. The application is approved 6-0. This, this application will be heard before mayor and council. Mr. Martin, when's this uh, going before mayor? December, or, or, yeah, December 18th. This will be heard before mayor and council on December 18th. And it's 7 p.m., correct, guys? Uh, yes, sir. In this room, Mr. Berman. Just so you know that, maybe you could have an opportunity to exchange some information that might be beneficial for both groups. Okay. Thank you very much. The, ap the application is approved 6 0. All right. The next item on our agenda is the zoning request Z17 024. Let me start over. It's 2017 433 uh, zoning request Z17 024. This is rezoning from R20 to RAD conditional for the development of five single family residents. It's uh, 1.3 acres at Landlot. 490 and 519. This is 2475, 2485, and 2495 Dixie Avenue. The applicant is Longo Homes. Uh, Mr. Martin, the background, please. All right. Um, this is traveling down the same path as the, the previous request. Uh, you guys will hear it tonight, make a recommendation, and then it'll go to mayor and council on December 18th for a final decision. Um, this site is approximately uh, 1.3 acres. It's located on uh, Dixie Avenue, uh, just south of Windy Hill. If you stood at the intersection of Belmont Boulevard and Atlanta Road and threw a rock across the, the railroad tracks, you probably hit this. There are currently three single family homes out there. The applicant is proposing to demo those three homes and build five new um, single family homes uh, and is requesting a rezoning from R20 to RAD conditional. The, the future land use for the area under the Cobb County future land use map is low density residential. So there'll be a, a, land, a future land use change request to moderate density residential, which is up to 4.5 units per acre. 
Um, as you can see, the adjoining property to the west is moderate density residential, and then the properties to the north, um, east, and south are all uh, low density residential under Cobb County's future land use map. Here's the proposed site plan. Uh, the five homes will be oriented towards uh, Dixie Avenue. Each home will have its own independent uh, driveway. Uh, with this request, uh, they're requesting uh, some setback changes. They're requesting a 25-foot front setback, a 10-foot exterior side setback, a 5-foot rear setback, and a 30-foot rear setback. With this request, they're proposing um, some open space for the development, a little park area with amenity feature. Here's the proposed location of the detention facility, and then a 20-foot access and drainage easement to uh, be able to maintain that facility. With this request, uh, there are four uh, variances associated, the first being with the front setback reduction from 35 feet to 25 feet, uh, the next being an interior side setback reduction from 10 feet down to five, and those are the setbacks in between the homes. The setbacks on the outside up next to adjoining properties will remain 10 feet. Um, the last, or the third, Variance is a reduction in lot size from 15,000 square feet down to 7,567. And the last one is a lot width reduction from 100 feet down to 50. Here are the proposed homes the developer is proposing to build. This is a subject site as a few days ago. And then Here's pictures of the adjacent property so you can get some context of what's going on in the area. Community development recommends approval of the rezoning of the subject property from R20 to RED conditional for five single family homes at a density of 3.82 units per acre with the following conditions. Uh, standard conditions from section 1201 of the zoning ordinance related to uh, the composition of the homes the requirement for an HOA, uh, the requirement for open space, stormwater management, underground utilities, traffic uh, improvements, burying of debris, street lights, and then landscaping requirements. Those are all standard stipulations that we apply to most uh, zoning requests. In addition to these standard conditions, we also are requiring some special conditions. Uh, the first being the setbacks that I described with the with the site plan, uh, number 14 being uh, the development shall require a minimum driveway length of 22 feet. Uh, 15 is a minimum lot size of 7,500 square feet. Uh, 16 being a minimum lot width of 50 feet. Uh, 17 is minimum floor area for the house of being 1,800 square feet. That is the RAD zoning minimum. That's not what they're proposing. What they're proposing will be larger than that, uh, but the minimum uh, zoning requirement is 1,800. Number 18 is requirement for a five-foot sidewalk along Dixie Avenue. 19 is holding the, the max height to 35 feet, which is standard for the R15 zoning district and R20 zoning district. Uh, number 20 uh, holds lot coverage for the property to 45% impervious surface area coverage. 21, uh, they shall be responsible for any water and sewer uh, improvements deemed necessary by the public works director. 22, uh, the stormwater management facility has to be located on its own lot and not on the lot of uh, one of the homes. 23 deals with uh, trees and limits of disturbance. If they're within the limits of disturbance and they're planned to be saved, they, they got to have tree protection measures around them. If they're 
if they're not planning to be saved, then they've got to be removed. Um, 24 deals with tying the rezoning the property to the site plan submitted, and 25 ties them to the building elevation submitted. And then finally, 26 are additional agreeable stipulations by the applicant. With that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Have any questions for Mr. Martin? Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, at this time, we'd like to ask the applicant to come forward and tell us a little bit about your plan. Good evening, Mr. Sams. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. How are you? Doing well, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you very much. I've represented Verizon in the past, and I so wanted to jump up and, and get my two cents worth for the last one, but I'm glad I did not. Well, Mr. Rice is certainly glad you did not as well. In any event, uh, good evening. For the record, my name is Garvis Sams. I represent... Uh, in this case, uh, Longo Custom Homes, and uh, Mr. Longo just, just walked in the door. He uh, regrettably, and this is not a, uh, an invocation, simply regrettably had to put down his dog this afternoon, so I didn't expect him to be here, but so, so happy that he is, so the two of us can respond to any questions or address any concerns you have at the appropriate time. Um, you can thank me for the brevity of your meeting tonight. The, four of the, the first five cases on your agenda were being handled by my firm, either uh, <laughs> continued or or withdrawn, which is not to say that next month you're going to like me for the length of your uh, length of your meeting. But um, Senior Planner Rusty Martin has done an excellent job of, of laying things out for you. But I would like to cover to some additional salient points if if I could. Um, the property shown on the site plan at issue here. This is a 1.32 acre tract of land. Uh, it's located on the north uh, western side of Dixie Avenue, as you can say. It's sort of sandwiched in between Belmont and Pierce. Avenue. Um, the, the homes uh, that are located on there is three homes. We propose an additional two for a total of five. Uh, have, um, have a long history and, and when they were built, uh, presumptively in the early 60s, they're, they're very fine homes, but they've fallen into a state of disrepair. Most of the area around here is, is renter owned, or excuse me, renter occupied. Um, this is across uh, Atlanta Road and Dixie Avenue from uh, the Belmont Mixed Use Development, which is highly successful, uh, but still under construction. Um, I think you've got to be proud of that. It's, it's been a birthing process for that for the past decade, and you're seeing it all now come to fruition with respect to the quadrant of that particular intersection, which we're, we're highly motivated by, and we, we love the adjacency and pedestrian um, not connectivity so much as availability for this, and also its proximity here to, to Market Village and City Hall and, and uh, the library and those other um, uh, amenities. At best, this can be described as a transitional piece. This is part of an overall tract of land located in unincorporated uh, Cobb County, and the totality of the property with which it's in, including the, the three lots that are part of this development tonight, uh, constitute what's called an unincorporated island. And cities, counties cannot create unincorporated island. This is for islands. This happened over a period of time. Uh, but fortuitously, um, Cobb County has weighed in on this application, uh, expressed no objection to it. Uh, it's in keeping with the intergovernmental agreement between the county uh, and the city. Um, so. The county is anxious to see it developed. It's anxious to see it brought into the city. It's the rightful place to be surrounded, in essence, uh, the entirety of the island by other city city properties. What Mr. Longo does are custom, quality-built, single-family, detached residences. In this case, that's what he uh, proposes uh, for this. Typically, his price point's a little higher than the, the 450 to, to 500, but for this site, for this size, for this location, uh, with a strategic positioning, we think this is a, this is a good choice. And uh, you've been given uh, a handout uh, by me that includes a, a lot of different things that, that we've incorporated and utilized uh, some of the city's documentation in terms of location maps, future land use maps, zoning maps. But you also have from us uh, elevations and renderings of the houses. And if you look at the last three sheets of this handout, this is a remarkable. Uh, it, it's not a condition or a stipulation of the zoning. But you can see the, uh, the, the minutia, the detail that Mr. Longo goes to, to
to put in these homes. So these are this is literature that he hands out to prospective purchasers uh, and to the buyers of the homes that he's he's custom building. I've never seen uh, a developer go to quite these links, and maybe I've just simply missed something over my career. But but in any event, I, I think it should give you a great comfort that in juxtaposition or in addition to the uh, the architectural style and composition, which you can which you can see is. Uh, is, uh, is, is phenomenal. And, and, and it complements, of course, his higher density, what Trayton and others have done across Atlanta Road as a part of the Belmont mixed-use process or mixed-use development. Uh, but it's in keeping with the tenor of that architecture, in fact, a actually one, one step uh, above that. Uh, while this application has been pending, we've established a dialogue with, with Mr. Martin, Mr. Sudworth, uh, other members of your professional staff. We, we've met also with Eric Randall, your city engineer, Hydrology is important for this site. We've presented a preliminary uh, conceptual hydrology report uh, to Mr. Randall. Uh, we're in the process of revising that, so we'll have the, the finished product of that before the, the mayor and council meeting. Uh, we're agreeable to, to all of the stipulations and conditions contained in, in staff's uh, memo, and, and, and their memo, of course, takes into consideration other infill developments that they've used, I won't say as comparables, because they're not comparable sales per se, but there are other developments in the area, and you can see this is this is the development that has the, the largest lot size and, and, and the least density of all, but I think one of the uh, the templates that Mr. Martin and Mr. Sudworth were looking at. The price points, as I mentioned, will be from the 450s to 550 and potentially up since they're, they're custom built. and. Um, Really, as a part of that process, upgrades are, are not unusual to exceed that 550, 550 mark. And, and we've agreed to these as conditions of the zoning for the composition and the style, which will meet the, the city's standards and, and provisions. Um, all the homes at a minimum will have attached two-car garage, which, as you can see with the stipulations, we've stepped to the fact that the garages will always have the availability for, for storing two cars. Um, which means you can have stuff in there, your garbage cans, your bicycles, and your rakes and whatnot, but, but they always have to be the ability to park two cars in there, and that's important because we've got also additional, uh, a minimum 22-foot length in, in parking on the, uh, the driveway as well. Uh, even though Dixie Avenue is not what I would call a major thoroughfare, in fact, it's a, with a reconfiguration years ago of Windy Hill and Atlanta Road, it's kind of cut off, and I think that's one reason we, we've not seen a lot of development for it. But nevertheless, I, I think the, the less street parking uh, on uh, Dixie Avenue, I think the better for your um, public safety vehicles and your public service uh, and police officials. By the way, with respect to the fire department, uh, we've, we've agreed to the fire marshal's recommendations with respect to turning maneuverability, with respect to firefighting and, and hose pull length, and also with respect to um, fire apparatus being able to access uh, these properties. The, uh, the community, these are all for sale homes. There's, there's no rental component to it all, not even a percentage. We've agreed to uh, setting up an HOA that will contain conditions uh, and restrictions that will include strict architectural control. So what you see in the elevations is, is what you're going to get, except on a, a larger scale. This is a template or a sampling of, of what Mr. Longo can do. Uh, if there's only five homes, uh, in, in order to ensure that the HOA is properly insured and has monies and is able to handle the day-to-day -day operations of the HOA, then you're going to have a third-party management company that will do that until such time as the HOA is up and running until such time as the lots are sold and developed, and then the HOA uh, takes over, presumptively, um, and assuming, as the stipulations say, they have the ability to be able to do that. We're submitting a landscape plan. We've already, of course, submitted a tree preservation replacing, replacement plan. All HVAC and mechanical systems, everything will either be underground or screened from view. So going down Dixie Avenue, going down Pierce, going down Belmont, going across Dixie to the other side of Atlanta Road, you're not going to be able to see any air conditioning units, utility units, uh, or anything uh, of that nature. Uh, I mentioned the city engineer, I mentioning the public works director, sewer is available to the site. Uh, for the most part, it's located in Dixie Avenue. There's a, there's a chance that uh, Mr. Longo may have to do a sewer main extension, but as a condition of, of the uh, rezoning, he's uh, agreed to do that, even though that's not been costed out. It, it could be quite 
um, expensive, at least in terms of the scope of the development, which is small, but he's agreed to that nonetheless. We built into our stipulations, and, and this is something we do in other jurisdictions, and we started doing it here in the city, and that is um, uh, constructing a, a condition whereby uh, the community development director or his designee obtains the latitude or authority to make minor modifications to the plan. I don't mean increase the density, I don't mean change the access to the right of way, but if a, a lot line needs to be moved or a setback needs to be just uh, moved slightly, then, then your staff uh, in its discretion has the authority to do that. So that's part of your stipulations, at least is contained in my November 7th uh, letter. Clearly, according to the county, according to your staff, according to uh, a layperson like me driving by the, the property, this is an excellent redevelopment, transitional, not step down, but a transitional area that, that takes away, ameliorates, or lessens uh, the unincorporated island that is there, which, which should be the goal of all governing authorities. You can't create them, uh, but when you're faced with them, to the extent that you can lessen them, and, and you're going to see assemblages up and down Dixie, down Pierce, and and Belmont, uh, we think, in, in the years, if not the months, to come. And so for all these purposes, we do ask that you follow your staff's recommendations because we agree to the standard and the special steps. Uh, my um, November the 7th letter, and the, you as a, a planning and zoning board recommend to the mayor uh, and the city council that the, the application be approved. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Ms. Hanwar, at the uh, appropriate uh, time, Hanwar, I'm sorry, um, be glad to respond to any questions or address any concerns you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sams. Always entertaining and informational, for sure. <laughs> About the entertaining part, but thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Rice. <laughs> just, uh, any, any questions for the applicant? Mr. Campo. Thank you. Um, just a couple. The, the size of these homes are going to be 2,400 up. Yes, sir. You have footage. You, you mentioned here also that, um, I mean, you're talking about five homes, but you said um, what dictates whether it's going to be a basement or a slab in these five homes? That'll be dictated by, by the topography on the site and, and, and in terms of whether they can actually have daylight-type basements. And, um, and as far as the topography, it looks like uh, that could be a possibility. Mr. Longo? The, the engineering and the grading plan hadn't been done for the site, typically a function of plan review, so we don't definitively know the answer to that question. Okay. Um, just one other thing. Each house will have a two-car garage in the front, right? Two-car. It'll be front-loaded, yes, sir. So there, there's, still, there's going to be room in the driveways if, if guests are invited to a home to park at least two cars off the street. Yes, sir. We, we've stipulated as a condition for that. Oh, yes, sir. All right. And the final question is, um, have you thought about a price range on these homes? Oh, yes, sir. They'll be, they'll be starting at 450, going up to 650,000. And depending on extras that the, the purchasers want, or possibly more. As I said, these are for the most part going to be custom homes. So they're not going to be built and spec and he hopes he can sell it. But the market is, is hot. I mean, you, you know what your market is. You saw it in the media right. uh, four or five months ago. The, the, and this area, thanks to Belmont, the, the halo effect of that has just fantastic. And you're going to see in the next decade what's going to happen to this side of Atlanta Road, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Campo. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Sams. All right, this is a public hearing. At this time, we'd like to ask if there's anyone in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to this application. Now is that time. Come on up. Good evening and welcome. Please state your name and address for the record. Yes, sir. Uh, Terry McAllister, and I live in North Marietta, uh, but I own property adjacent to this property. Okay. Uh, I'm not here to oppose it. I, th I think it sounded like a good plan, but I just had a couple of comments. Uh, and that is that, well, number one is I, I think that I thought as an adjoining owner, I would have been notified in my mail that this was happening, but it doesn't matter because I saw the signs so I'm here anyway. But, uh, uh, but the detention and stormwater pond and drainage area, uh, I know that has to be there and all but it is right adjacent to my property. And uh, I just would like to ask that y'all might would recommend 
and I know they've got some plannings and things like that, but I, I guess my, uh, my comment is twofold. One is for safety, perhaps maybe a stockade type fence or a wrought iron fence, because there are children that play in that area. And, um, uh, and, um, and the, the safety part with the fence or something, and the aesthetics, because sometimes those things end up, they look pretty nice to start with, but they're allowed to grow up and just pretty, become pretty unsightly. And I noticed that that stated that the HOA would be responsible for that, but I would hope there would be some teeth in that. But that, that's all my comment, I appreciate it. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Collister. Ms. Uh, Mr. Sams, do you want to address how the HOA would handle maintaining and if any fencing or screening that would be? Uh, it, it, first of all, it, it, it um, is conceptually positioned right now. Mr. Mr. Randall has looked at our preliminary conceptual hydrology plan. However, I, the positioning of it, because of the topo and the way the land falls and lies, I think that essentially you're going to see it, it is where it is. And I apologize to Mr. McAllister. I'll get his information to make sure but in the next 30 days between now and the mayor we, we will talk with him. We, we have talked with a number of business owners and property owners in the area. But to get to the point about, about the detention pond, uh, if not done right, if not configured and calculated right, that can be an absolute um, public or private nuisance. Uh, this will be totally landscaped. Um, as, as a part of our stipulations and conditions, it'll be fenced uh, in, in a manner that the city dictates during the plan review process. The HOA will be responsible for the upkeep and maintenance of the pond uh, to the city's design and detail specifications, and also uh, responsible for the fencing and the maintenance, both the fencing from a perspective, from a safety perspective, but also from from an aesthetic perspective as well. Um, and and the landscaping will be on on the outside of the fence and. We're thinking maybe a faux, a faux wrought iron type of, of look. Okay, this excellent. One. I think that answered the, the questions. All right, thank you, Mr. I'll Sam. get I'll get his information, and, and he and I will talk some more. That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Mr. There, Chairman, can, can I just add, just um, for the gentleman's information, the city does not require mail notification of adjacent properties uh, on that. So that's why you didn't get anything. It's not a requirement of the city to do that on a rezoning aspect. Now, M Mr. Sams has indicated that he, he, he'll, know, he'll talk to you and all of that, but I did want to clarify that that's why you didn't get one. It wasn't an oversight. It's not a requirement. Okay. I'm not here to oppose the yeah. houses in any way. Anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sudreth. All right, is there anyone else that'd like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to this application? Okay, I do believe that covers us there. Any other discussion, comments for the applicant? That covers us there, all right. I'd like to uh, request a motion, please. I would like to uh, make a motion to approve with the standard and special conditions um, item 2017-433, which is zoning request Z17024, for, uh, rezoning from R20 to RAD conditional. So we got a motion to approve, Ms. Hine Warren. Do we have a second? Oat. The application is approved 6-0. Mr. Longo, terribly sorry to hear about your dog. That's, that's a tough thing. They're very much part of all of our lives, for sure. Good luck with your application or with your project, and we look forward to seeing you more here in Smyrna. All right. Um, <clears throat> the last item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from the August, oh, boy, the October 9th. Where is it? It was the 9th, was it not? October 9th, planning and zoning meeting. Are the members in possession of the minutes? Are there any changes that need to be made at this time? We got a motion, Mr. Campo, to approve the minutes. We have a second, Ms. Harrington, the busiest board member tonight, Ms. Harrington, ladies and gentlemen. Please vote on the minutes. The minutes are approved 
Mr. Sudreth, there any any discussion, comments, anything you've got to add? Just have one uh, personnel uh, information for you. Um, our planner one, Bob Summerville, who is in the audience uh, with us tonight as well. Um, this is his last week at the office. Uh, Bob, for um, personal slash family reason, is um, will be moving back to California, so we wish him the best for that. Thank you for your time uh, and service with us, Bob, and um, we wish you the best uh, with your family situation on that. We've already advertised uh, to fill his position. It closed on Friday, and um, we had 61 applications. <laughs> so I started that process going through those today. That's all. Well, Bob, thank you so much for your time with us. Really enjoyed it. Anything else? All right. Mr. Stobbs, Mr. Mr. Martin. All right. This meeting is adjourned at 6.55 p.m. Somebody's going to give you one of those tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's probably going to have.